Would you like to know why security architect salaries are so high? If so, this video is for you. In today's video, we're going to talk about security architect salaries. We're going to show you why they are so high with an average security architect pay of $229,000 per year in the United States. And that's not counting principal security architects or distinguished security architects that could be earning $400,000 or $500,000 per year and move up the ranks into say things like a chief information security officer, which is ultimately the chief security architect. So in this video, we're gonna talk about why, and we're gonna get into the economics of the supply and demand curve for architects. We're gonna get into the specialized skills that architects possess, which are not common in almost any other career. And you're gonna see why that supply and demand curve favors the architect so much. So the first thing that I want you to see is I'm gonna briefly show you a traditional job, one that would have lower pay, and I'm gonna show you why. And then I'm gonna go into the architect salary. So let's say we have a job like software development. If we look at say a given demand, we're gonna look at the number of people out there that can do the job. So what I want you to see is where these two intersect is gonna be the salary. So if I look at a software developer, what do I know? I know that everybody's been taught to code for, to told to co learn to code for the last 20 some years. I know almost every university taught people how to code if they were in any tech degree kind of program. And I know so many people out there that know how to code and no matter where you code, it doesn't matter which part of the world you're in. So there is a huge supply of software developers and even AI is doing so with the coding. So that's why you see a role like software development may be on the lower end of the pay scale. Now we're gonna now go into the security architect skills. And I'm gonna separate the skills between say tech skills, business skills, executive skills, and you're gonna see why it's so rare. And with each time we're gonna go back to our supply and demand curve. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the technical skill range of the architect. Now as architects, we don't touch the technology. We plan the technology, we plan this technology strategy, and that is to provide some protection plan for the organization. So the first thing we have to do from a tech skill perspective is understand that organization's risk. Calculate that organization's risk exposure, and then help them develop a mitigation plan to manage risk, to make it impractical for most people to want to hack the organization. So what's gonna go into that? Well, we may be using things like network security, which means things like firewalls, access control lists, IDS, IPS system, segmentation, things like VLAN, things like private VLANs, layer two access list, layer three access list, depending upon where we're at, rate limiting, that kind of thing. And you need to know how to use them strategically to improve your security objective, not how to configure them. Now, even finding someone that knows those skills is gonna be very rare. But what about application security? That's also part of the security architect's roles. So secure software design, you know, threat modeling, the types of things that need to go into the code reviews from the so secure software development practices, things like input validation, those types of things. We need to know what goes into that so we can advise that team as an architect. Now, of course, we need to be able to be very well versed on IAM and when do we use the various IAM strategies, the authentication mechanisms and the strengths and weaknesses of each and the trade-offs of each. And are we implementing single sign-on or cloud access security brokers? Or do we need to use, say, a context-aware IAM versus a role-based access control? What are we doing for privileged account management? What are we doing for customer account management? Are we using a zero trust architecture and what's gonna go into that? So again, that's the IAM piece that goes into architecture. Now, I hope you're realizing most people already don't know these. And now let's think about cryptography. What are we using the cryptography? What kinds do we need quantum resistant cryptography? Are we, what are we looking for? What is the risk that we're actually dealing with? So then we need to think about the types of cryptography we might need and prevent attacks on the cryptographic system. So we're talking cryptography with at rest, cryptography in motion. So lots of things that is going to go into cryptography from us from a perspective. Now, when we think of security operations, we need to think what's going to go into running the department. Uh, what are our seam and source systems need to look like? And what are we expect to be achieving? What kind of monitoring and logging and incident response procedures are we going to create? What's going to go into the endpoint security for the organizations? How are we going to harden the endpoints? We're going to put a host based firewall, host-based IDS, IPS system, data loss prevention, what have you. And even what's going to go into vulnerability and threat management. Now that is the technical skills for the architect. So 
Let's have some fun with it. Let's go back to our supply and demand curve. Now, I hope you realize that list of skills is really, really, really rare. So just on that set of skills alone, you're getting a much higher salary than something where there's a lot of people in the role. But the architect needs much more than that. So once you understand you have to have the technical skills in there and knowledge, now you need to understand how to put it together into a strategy. You need to be very familiar with uh, frameworks, for example, the NIST framework or the ISO 27001 framework or Zero Trust framework, because you're going to be mapping a framework like this to your organization's control. You're going to have to have real knowledge of Zero Trust architectures and micro segmentation and how you're going to implement that in policy enforcement, especially in the world of cloud computing, which has less inherent security than we would say in the data center because of, say, software perimeters, uh, shared systems, and lots of other things. So we need a security architecture paradigm like zero trust. So you'll need a lot there. You will need to have a lot of knowledge into setting up business continuity plans, disaster recovery plans. And that could be anything from generators to fuel to food to security. So there's a lot that goes into that. So there's going to be a lot of that. So let's go back to our supply and demand curve. So that kind of planning skills and understanding that we're talking about really moves that architect salary a lot higher. So that's a part of it. Now let's get into the different set of skills. When we think about what we're actually doing, we're going to be getting involved in a lot of risk management. And we're going to be performing a lot of impact analysis. If this were to occur like a hurricane here, how would that impact the business? If this thing in the DMZ was breached, how would that impact the business? If we implement this control, this security control, will the people still be able to do their job? And if so, how much is extra time is it going to be? And how much is that going to cost the organization per year? So again, going into evaluating trade-offs, looking at agility for the business, which is almost the opposite of security and vice versa, how we try to do things. So now we're thinking about simulating attacks, we're planning attacks, and then we're going to plan how we would respond. So now we're getting into more planning skills. So let's see that impact. That's going to obviously, whoops, I don't want to do that. That's going to obviously move the supply and demand curve a little higher. But now the real expensive skills. So we come out of that. And that's a lot of technical, analytical planning skills that most people don't have. Now we get into the executive skills, which are the big part of the role. 60% of the job is executive. So now we need to find people with real business acumen that can understand a balance sheet, a financial statement, determine what the return on investment might be of a protection that we might do, the people able to do a cost benefit analysis and a payback period. So that's kind of bare minimum business acumen skills. The person needs to be able to manage stakeholders across the organization, identify them, understand what their needs are, influence them, negotiate between them. Another big executive skill that's near impossible to find. You have to be able to have executive presence to walk in there and communicate to the CEO and the board and get them to spend tens of millions of dollars. So you're going to need a lot of executive presence. You're going to be crafting policies and governance structures for an organization. And that means you're going to need a lot of executive skills to even know what that is. You're going to be managing vendors, managing contracts. So again, a lot more business skills. Now, you will be giving presentations constantly, which means presentation skills. You're going to be collaborating and facilitating and leading, which means leadership skills, collaboration skills. And there's going to be a lot of coaching that you typically do along the way. Now, let's go back to our supply and demand curve for that. Now, those are some of the hardest skills to find in the entire world. You're typically getting people out of an MBA program that have been executives to have those skills, meaning executives and executive coaching along the way. So as you look at that, you know, I hope you can see now why a job like this that tends to be more localized because you have to be able to visit your client periodically so you're not competing with the entire world that has a set of skills that almost no one in the world has. That's why the security architect earns so much. And that's why I've been recommending security architect careers, enterprise architect careers, cloud architect careers, and other architecture careers. Because guess what? It's pretty much the same situation for that. We have lots of people that know how to do. But we have almost no one that knows how to plan. Has all this tech knowledge, all this tech planning knowledge, and executive knowledge in the same career. Now, if you'd like to become a security architect, a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, an AI architect or any other kind of architect, 
join us on a free architecture webinar. We run one to two each week. And on this webinar, we will go over the skills for the various architectural roles, the complete set of skills. We'll go over exactly what we do and tell you exactly what you need to do to go out there and get hired. And it's a completely free webinar. It is on Zoom. You can ask me any kind of questions you want, and we'll obviously answer any questions you actually have as well. So I hope to see you on the webinar. Sign up. The link is in the description of this video. When you're in the description of this video, please understand we have a lot of free things to assist you in your IT architecture career. Things like how to win the interview, things like how to become a cloud architect or an AI architect. So maybe sign up for some. They'll be emailed to you and they're completely free. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video real soon or a free webinar. Take care. Thank you.